Salut survivors, welcome back to Solutorcast channel in Medieval Dynasty guide series. Following last week farming guide, now it's time to cook all the good food we harvested. In this video, I will tackle all cooking recipes and numerous tips. I will start by going through all of the cauldron recipes and will detail the spoilage mechanics. It will be followed by all of the bread recipes, including my recommended best bread in the game. After which, I will cover the tier 3 food recipes for villagers' maximum happiness boost. Lastly, I will talk about the tavern innkeeper mechanics and tips. As a disclaimer, the best food that I recommend is based on the game statistics. It's not based on how delicious they are. <laughs> if you find this video useful in any way, share, like and subscribe for more Medieval Dynasty videos. To be noted is that the game is in early access, therefore we should expect balance patches and additional content soon. Now let's get straight to the video survivors. The first recipes available in the game are what I call here the cauldron recipes. They can be cooked in any campfire in the game, in any house, and in the tavern level 1, 2, and 3. They are using the most uh, basic ingredients for your cooking. They are available 6 recipes. Two are cereal based, which is a gruel and a porridge. One is using 5 rye grain and the other one 5 oat grains. But their statistics are identical with a nutrition value of 20, a weight of 0.2 kilograms, a price value of 15 coins and a cooking time of 5 seconds and zero health bonus. After this, we have the meat with gravy. This one requires two stages cooking because you need first to roast your meat and then cook it with onions. So that one is not highly recommended as a main goal, but is actually useful. If you have some meat about to spoil, you can roast it and later on you can use the roasted meat to cook the meat with gravy. The potage has a much higher nutrition value of 30 and a very interesting price of 40 coins while it's using simply one meat and one cabbage in a one stage cooking. Finally, we have the soup and the stew with the highest nutrition value for the cauldron cooking recipes with a 35 nutrition value. They are respectively, respectively using one meat and two beetroot and one meat and three carrots. The advantage of the stew, beside its high price of 40 equivalent to potage, is that it's using carrot. And as carrot is the only vegetable you can plant in winter, then it can present advantages to target to produce the stew. Now, to be noted here is both the potage and the stew are sold or have a value, a price of 40 coins. It does not mean you sell them for 40 coins, you actually sell them for 14, one four, uh, approximately one third of the rated price value. So both the potage and the stew are relatively heavy with 0.5 and 0.55 kilograms, but early in the game, when you start to produce a, a good amount of cabbage, meat or carrots, both the potage and the stew can represent a very uh, lucrative business to sell potage and stew. Now, if you are cooking simply for the nutrition, then the soup and the stew are probably ideal. To be noted is that none of these recipes provide a health bonus and they are cooked relatively fast. Once again, if you need to produce 100 potage and sell them, it's much easier to do this when it's only 5 seconds rather than 20 seconds like we will see with the breads. Now, a couple of uh, bullet points and advices before we move on to the breads. 
One first point is that when something is spoiled, the price value of that item decreases when you sell it. But the nutrition value does not lower with the spoilage at the current stage of development of the game. Another point in line with the previous point is that at every switch of season, ingredients and cooked foods spoil a little bit. They spoil more if they are in your backpack and they spoil less in the food storage. Therefore, if you cook for selling for cash, try to cook at the start of a season and sell before the season ends. Or you would lose revenue if you would cook in summer and sell that produce in autumn, as an example. Another bullet point is that if you are using old spoiled ingredients to cook a dish, it's fine. The freshly cooked dish will still be at 100% upon cooking. So generally speaking, try to cook with all the ingredients and try to sell the uh, recipes or the produce of your cooking within the same season when you have cooked it while it's fresh. But if you eat something spoiled or partially spoiled, it's fine. To be noted is that if something rots, then it will be available as an ingredient to produce fertilizer, so it's not completely wasted. Lastly, if a meat or a fish is about to rot, as mentioned earlier, you can roast it in order to cook uh, meat with gravy. Alternatively, you can salt it or you can dry it. The tier 2 recipes are the breads. In order to craft breads, you need to produce them in an oven. You can have an oven in a tavern level 2 or in a tavern level 3. You can then purchase the recipes for your breads in the technology tab under the crafting section. In the tavern 2, you can then purchase all your bread recipes you desire to purchase. Until a few days ago, there were six breads available in the game, but uh, thanks to the last patch, then we now have seven different types of breads available in the game. All breads are utilizing flour, which you can produce in the barn, and different types of ingredients. So we first have the flat bread. This flat bread is a basic one, with three flour and three water as ingredients, but already provides a nutrition value of 40. You can have another version of the flat bread, the one with onion, where you add two onions to the recipe and you double up its value, its price value from 10 to 20 coins and gain plus 10 nutrition, up to 50 nutrition. You then have the rye bread, which is using flour, water, eggs and rye, and then wheat bread, which is using flour, water, eggs and wheat. We then have the white bread utilizing 10 flour and then 5 water and 2 eggs. The multigrain bread is really great with a total nutrition value of plus 75 nutrition. However, it is utilizing two flour and then five of each wheat, rye and oat, as well as water and eggs. To be noted is that the multigrain bread provides the highest health bonus with plus 20 and the highest nutrition value with plus 75. So the multigrain bread is really the best of the bread. We then have the new one that got released a few days ago, the oat rolls, with a nutrition value of 45, slightly better than the flat bread. However, this one is using eggs and oat. Obviously, out of these breads, it depends on your production. Within, you can produce rye, or wheat, or oat, or all of them. And the best bread is definitely the multigrain bread. 
Now, I would not recommend producing the white bread with the mindset to sell it, because even if it has the highest price value with 50 coins, the cost of 10 flowers to produce your white bread is actually very expensive, in my opinion. Now that I have presented to you the different breads, I will show you how to obtain buckets of water, because as you can see, every bread requires water. The buckets, in order to fill them up with water, you first need to obtain buckets. Either you can craft buckets, or you can purchase buckets in Boro or at Falibo. So in order to craft buckets, it's uh, under technology, at the farming uh, section, under cow shed. This is where the bucket is available. So it can be used for the cows or the goats uh, to uh, get milk or you can use the buckets to get water. And these buckets to get water is what you need to make your bread. So to craft a bucket, once you have unlocked the recipe, you can do it in a workshop or in a smithy. You go to your workbench, wooden tools, and here are the buckets. So here I'm going to make some buckets. So each bucket costs one wool thread, two linen thread, and two logs. So as long as you are uh, producing uh, wool and linen, that's relatively simple. If you are not producing wool or linen, that's probably easier to just buy your buckets. Now, once you have your buckets, it's a little bit cumbersome at first, but once you get it, it's, it's all right. One on the tool belt six, one on tool belt seven, one on tool belt eight. Then after that, I can equip them with a tool belt and I can fill them up with a left click in the water. Now, my buckets are filled up with water. Cool, you need to do one by one, huh? but each bucket has 10 units of water. So for example, here now, I have three buckets full of water. They are 10 out of 10. So I have a total of 30 units of water. Here, I am in uh, Bororo and uh, at Falibo, here, Falibo, you can then purchase a bucket. Here, bucket. So you see, it has eight buckets for sale. So that's pretty expensive, but you, you don't need many. Uh, if you have, a, let's say, one or two for convenience, then you can start to produce your bread. That's a backup if you cannot produce your own. The tarts and pies also require an oven and can therefore be baked in taverns tier 2 and tier 3. However, you need the tier 3 cooking recipes which are unlocked in the tavern 3 in the technology tab. The pies and tarts generally are the most expensive foods in the game and provide the maximum mood bonus to your NPCs. I have noticed from a tier 1 food supply in the food storage up to a tier 3 food, an increase between 10 to 15% of the mood of my citizens. As of now, there are 3 tarts and 2 pies in the game. They all require 10 flour and 5 water as a basic ingredient. Then the fish tart requires also two fishes, either raw or dried fishes. The fruit tart requires 10 berries and the meat tart requires two meats, either raw or salted meat, as well as two onion and two carrots. Each of the tarts provides 45 nutrition value and have a cooking time ranging from 20 to 25 seconds. For the health bonus, the meat tart provides plus 20 health bonus, while the fish tart provides only plus 10. We then have the pies, which are the best foods in the game. The fruit pie and the meat pie both provide plus 70 nutrition and have a price value of 45 and 50 respectively and a health bonus of plus 20. The fruit pie would require 10 berries and 2 eggs, 
in addition to the flour and the water, while the meat pie only requires two eggs and one roasted meat in addition to the flour and the water. Generally speaking, if you intend on producing these foods, this should really be for yourself or for your villagers. Because the price uh, of these tarts and pies, if you intend on selling them to a shop, is not, in my opinion, really worth it when you consider their ingredients cost. Now, if you look at their uh, health bonuses, ranging from plus 10 up to plus 20, it is the same as a multigrain bread. So for healing purpose, the multigrain bread is doing its job and costs much less than a meat tart, a fruit pie and a meat pie. To be noted is that the fruit tart and the fruit pie both require berries and berries are only available during summer. So it is recommended to harvest berries every summer so that you can still cook and bake fruit tarts and fruit pies during autumn, winter and spring. As a summary, the tarts and the pies are definitely the most expensive and complex foods to produce in the game. But if you want to have a high mood boost to your people and get more babies, that's the way to go. You can of course cook yourself from the beginning of the game until the end. However, from the moment you start to have a tavern, tier 1, you can have an innkeeper in the tavern who will cook for yourself and for your entire village. When you will have a tavern level 2 and then level 3, you will be able to add more workers at the same time as unlocking additional possibilities for cooking. To be noted, is that the skill required by the innkeeper to cook and bake is actually the crafting skill. There is no cooking skill in the game, so what is required is a crafting skill for the innkeeper to perform more efficiently. Considering that some recipes are actually a relatively complex chain of production to be produced in the tavern, you should try to keep it simple for your tavern innkeepers so that you avoid to regularly change the recipe they should cook and bake and you need to ensure to have a constant supply of the ingredients they need for the recipes you instruct them to produce in the tavern. As a summary, for the tier 1 recipes, the two best nutrition value foods you can obtain are the, from the soup and the stew and to a lower extent also from the potage. At the same time, both the potage and the stew provide the best value for money versus the ingredients it costs to produce. So you can have a good business from potage and stew. In the tier 2, what you gain mostly is a healing ability from your breads. And the best bread is a multigrain bread. And it also provides a very, very good nutrition value. Lastly, for the tier 3, the main advantage so far from the tier 3 uh, foods or um, pies and tarts is a mood boost to increase the happiness of your citizens. This can present a, a very good advantage if you are in winter and you have a lack of firewood for example. Or if you want to have more babies at some point in time. Or with the newly added events to the game. This can present an advantage to provide a mood boost to your people. To summarize the key ingredients in the game, I will list it down as follows. Cabbage, meat, cereals for flour, and eggs. With these ingredients, you will be able to handle a lot already. To be noted is that so far, I feel the fish is very secondary. Whether it's fish, dried fish, salted fish, it's not used in any key recipe. For example, the fish tart is the least good of the tarts. So you could very well do a berry tart or a meat tart that would actually be better than a fish tart. Now it might change in the future, 
but so far the fish is kind of not very relevant at the moment. Now, to be added is that in the roadmap from the developers there will be the distillation added in Q4 2020. So we can expect from the descriptions in the game that this distillation will help to produce alcohol in a tavern tier 3. When this will happen, I will then prepare a study and a guide about alcohol and distillation in medieval dynasty. If you have any comments, suggestions, additional tips, feel free to leave a message in the comment section below. And please leave a like and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching and see you soon for more Medieval Dynasties videos. And until then, have a good day. Cheers.